It is TM66 Payback. It's not too useful a move. I think it does double damage if you go last in a, in a battle. Like if the enemy is faster than you. Alright, now let's go over here. Oh, there's a cut tree. And since we still have our uh, sacrificial goat on hand, we can go ahead and use it and find this rare candy. Nice. Oh, there was a patch of shaking grass right there. Could have exploited that, but ran into this um, stupid feline. You know what, just for that. Actually, did, that's a decent amount of experience, actually. We go in here. This is Lost Lorne Forest. Pretty interesting uh, area. Uh, I believe it is something to do with the uh, Zoroark event, which was released a long time ago. Something I'm never going to get to experience. You know, there are people in the world with many different values. Some people enjoy things you might not think are fun. Having a lot of different values in the world makes it a richer place. That's what I think anyway. I really enjoy traveling around the world and talking with different people, but the woman who lives here seems to think living quietly by herself is important. Okay, yeah, that, that leads to nowhere. No items. If we take it, if we go ahead and peek inside this trailer, get a woman who says absolutely nothing to you, kind of like that boy in uh, Castelia City with the uh, girl who was talking about uh, Zorua. I'm pretty sure that woman is actually a Zoroark, which would make sense. She lives alone in a place called Lost Lorn Forest, and um, yeah, she doesn't talk. So, it's pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that she is a Zoroark that is using its illusion abilities to disguise itself as a human. But yeah, that's just a little bit of trivia for you. I don't think there's anything else besides the uh, big mushroom we picked up in that tree stump. There is something up this waterfall, but obviously we can't go up the waterfall just yet. Alright. Hey, look, a Trubbish. What do you know? Alright, that concludes everything on this route. So we'll go ahead and challenge the gym. Because that is what we do. We're not going to heal just... Actually, we probably should. Arkin is a... Uh, Petrie is poisoned. He will heal up, then challenge the gym. Heal up again, and then challenge the leader for the end of this recording session. I'm not looking forward to it. Elisa is definitely one of the most annoying... Actually, she is the most annoying gym leader. She's a... Uh, Pretty dangerous, but okay, let's let's see here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and teach another TM to my uh, Pokemon. I'm gonna break out Rock Tomb and teach it to both Sock or Black and Rudy. Because they are going to be the ones that star in this gym battle. So let's forget double kick. And then for Rudy... We will forget Swagger. It's not doing anything for us. 
All right. With that said and done... You know, I probably should have taught it to Arkin as well. Petrie, sorry. I could have taught it to Petrie as well, but just so he could have a physical rock-type move to take advantage of his massive attack stat. But he's not going to be performing in this gym battle because it does use electric types, in case you haven't guessed already. And yeah, he's not going to do so hot against electric types. So yeah, let us go ahead and enter the gym. As usual, talk to this guy to get a fresh water. In this roller coaster gym, the first step is to get in the car. Then comes the platform. There you can change where the coaster is going. Sometimes you continue by riding the cars of opponents you defeat. That's how you aim for the gym leader. And we have a ground type. So, um... Actually, having a ground type for this gym isn't as useful as you might think. There are a grand total of three Pokemon that are used in this gym, and one of them is completely immune to ground type moves. So yes, have fun. I believe we'll be seeing that Pokemon in this gym battle right here. This gym trainer here. Lady Magnolia. She has an Emolga, electric flying type. Com as I said, completely immune to ground moves. Luckily, you do have that TM for rock tomb, so if you don't actually have a rock type, then uh, yeah, it, that's your best bet. So yeah, they got Spark, which can paralyze you. Fortunately, it did not. They also have the Static ability, which will paralyze you. Uh, the most annoying trait of Emolga, though, is the fact that they know how to use Double Team, which is extremely annoying. Um, let's have Rudy take care of this one. Because I just taught him Rock Tomb, so he'll do a decent job against the Emolgas. Intimidate always helps. Yeah, he's immune to Spark, so pretty much the only thing they can do is use Pursuit. Speed's going down. That's what I like to see. There we go. A lot of money for that, too. Th almost 4,000. Anyway, let's switch Pokemon real fast, because I think I know what the next trainer has. I mean, it's not exactly hard to know what they have. I'm going to spoil it for you right now. The women in this gym have Emolga, and the men have Blitzel. So yeah, not exactly hard to predict. Welcome, Challenger. I will do you the greatest of honors and accept your challenge. Something that something else that kind of ticks me off about Elisa's gym is the fact that they only use a total of three different Electric-type Pokémon. There are several other Electric-type Pokémon in Unova that they could be using. In fact, right off the top of my head, there's five. There's the Tynamo line, which consists of Tynamo, Electric, and Electros. And then there's the Joltik line, which consists of Joltik and Galvantula. Sh I mean, oh, I suppose a possible reason for them not including those electric types in this gym is probably because they didn't want to, like, spoil it for you this early or something. That's the only reason I could possibly think of, but seriously, who cares? Just more variety, please. Joltik would have actually been a really good Pokemon for Elisa to use because it's not immune to ground type moves, but it is. It's not. It's, just, it's not weak to ground type moves. And speaking of immunities to ground type moves, Tynamo, thanks to its ability Levitate, is completely immune to ground type moves. So yes, 
I don't know why they just decided to go with nothing but electric zebras and flying squirrels, and they could have been going with lampreys and giant spiders instead. Or as well, I suppose. I will tell you, though, in the next game, in the sequel, Elise's gym does get a little bit better. In terms of variety, that is. Again with Flame Charge. I think it's kind of nifty that a Blitzel can actually use that move, Flame Charge. Um, definitely allows it to hit grass types for super effective damage. Um, it is kind of unusual, though, that, they, that they'd give that move to an electric type, but that's just my personal preference. I mean, I'm not complaining, it definitely does add to the amount of uh, type coverage Blitzel has. Because I don't think he can do much besides um, Flame Charge and Electric type moves. Would have been pretty interesting if he got Earthquake. That, uh, that would have been a sight to see. Alright, level 28 for Malfoy, and he wants to learn Slam. Um, slam. It's only 75 accuracy, so 25% of the time it's going to be missing its mark. I think I'm going to stick with Tackle for now, because I, I don't like any move that's below 80 accuracy. Just, I find them too unreliable. So sorry, but I'm going to be giving up on Slam. I'm going to be sticking with Tackle for now. Another huge wad of cash for beating that. Alright. Let's go ahead and use... The last trainer has an Emolga. So I'm going to go ahead and pick... You know, why not? Rudy. Let's go with Rudy. Okay, one one more roller coaster to ride. Your Nimbaza Gym Challenge is finally nearing its finale, but if you don't beat me, you won't get to meet Miss Elisa. I'm also a Pokemon trainer who is toughened up by Miss Elisa. I'll show you power and style befitting this gym. I'm sure you will. I'm very sure. Lady Colette has another stupid flying squirrel. Intimidate, that will definitely help. I'll throw out the rock tomb. Again with that expression. Oh, and here we go. Using double team. The Emolgas in this gym tend to spam it, and wow. Critical hit, okay, that makes our life a lot easier. As well as a level up for Rudy. That's pretty awesome. Okay. And that's the final trainer. <gasps> Wait. Could it be? Rudy's evolving. We've only had him for one recording session so far, and already... Already, he's uh, that much closer to his final form. Rudy evolved into Crocorock. I personally think Crocorock is my favorite of the three just because of how badass he looks. Just that, look at that pose, man. Got the arms folded. It's like, yeah, I mean business. I love Crocorock. The name is fun to say, too. So yeah, that's just in time for the gym battle. However, I will skip ahead, and um, I do want to go heal before I take on Elisa. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that.
Okay. Pokemon Center. Get all of our Pokemon healed up. Okay. Let's see, who are we going to send in first? You know what? I actually want to try something risky. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but I'm going to teach Rock Tomb Petrie, and I'm going to use him in the gym battle. I know I'm kind of doing this on a whim, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun. Plus, I don't want to use uh, Rudy for both, or because Elise has three Pokemon. And I'm going to spoil it right now. Two of them are Emolgas, and I don't want to use Rudy for both Emolgas. So I think using Petrie will, will be kind of fun. It'll be a fun little um, experiment to see if using Arkin in the battle against Elisa is a viable strategy. I've never done it before. But um, I'm feeling kind of uh, daring and creative in this. Or daring and creative today. Okay, press the switch. I don't know why, but I've always been reminded of Rayman's shoes when I look at these roller coasters. If any of you have who have played uh, one of the Rayman games, will probably know what I'm talking about. They, they look just like his shoes. Just re just make them yellow, and they'll look identical. Just replace the blue with yellow, and they'll and it'll look just like his shoe. All right. Anyway. Random video game references aside, it's time for us to take on Elisa. I'm going to save, because that's the thing you kind of want to do before you fight a gym leader. Alright. We're ready. We are ready indeed. Did the fantastic speed leave you dizzy? My beloved Pokemon will be the next one to make your head spin. Cue the music. All right, the fourth gym leader, Elisa. Starting off with her first Emolga. Now, I'm gonna get this uh, out of the way right now. Elisa is probably one of the most annoying gym leaders in the whole game because her strategy revolves around the use of a new move called Volt Switch. Volt Switch is basically an electric type version of U-Turn. It does damage, and then it switches to another Pokemon automatically. Because of this, Elisa will be constantly swapping around her Pokemon, and it'll just make it really hard for you to keep up. So hopefully, Petrie's faster, and hopefully he can one-shot her with this. Nope. Volt Switch. Okay, note to self, it is not a viable strategy. It is not a viable strategy indeed. Okay, speed went down, hopefully I can outspeed it now. No, of course it uses quick attack. So sorry, Petrie, I love you and all, but... I, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry for that. Alright, Black. your job to finish this. We're going to be using Rock Tomb again. Nice. Okay, so, note to self. Using Arkin is not a viable strategy. Second Emolga is coming in. We're going to swap to Rudy. And finish it off real quick. Alright, Intimidate. Loving it. Uh, these Umalgas also know Pursuit and Aerial Ace, I think. Definitely Aerial Ace, but I'm not sure about Pursuit. Okay. Missed. I'm not too worried about that.
All right, now that its speed is lowered, we'll finish it off with Crunch. Static, of course. Naturally. Okay. Finally, Zebstrika. It's her main Pokemon. It's her deadliest. It's the evolved form of Blitzel. So it's an even bigger and angrier Lightning Zebra. Uh, this one knows Volt Switch, Pursuit, Quick Attack, and Flame Charge. So pretty much the same, exact same moveset as Emolga, except Flame Charge instead of uh, Aerial Ace. All right, the reason why I'm using Saw or Black in this fight is because I actually taught him Dig as well. Okay, Spark. Spark is his other move. Okay. Oh god, critical hit. Yeah, imagine my surprise when I learned that Saw can learn Dig. Okay, she's probably going to pull out a healing item right now, and I think that's the, a very smart way to go. So I'll use a Lemonade. She's going to use a Hyper Potion. Alright, we're going to use Dig again. Alright, I think we have this in the bag, pretty much. Just bring a ground type. Bring a ground type. It completely nullifies her ability to use Volt Switch. And that takes away a good deal of the annoyance factor. Brick Break, awesome. Let's replace uh, Karate Chop with that. Brick Break, nice. Alright. I meant to make your head spin, but you shocked me instead. Ah, electric type buns. Okay, so all you need is a ground type and a rock type move. And Elisa, a, a good deal of the uh, danger is taken off of the fight with Elisa. You have a sweet fighting style. I mean, you're a great trainer. I, uh, excuse me, I, uh, oh here. I want you to have this. The Bolt Badge. If you have four badges, including this Bolt Badge, Pokemon up to level 50, including traded Pokemon, will obey you. Also, here's this move I like. Feel free to use it um, if you want to. Guess what it is? It's the TM for Volt Switch. If you want to use it, go ahead. It's um, a fairly powerful electric type move. Okay, Driftvale City is next. There is a Pokemon Gym there after all. Oh. I bet you won't be able to get there. You know what? I'll fix it so you can cross. Wait for me on Route 5. Okay. So Elise is going to help us get to the next town, but uh, that will have to be in the next recording session, unfortunately. Well, that was a good gym, ba gym battle. Uh, apart from Petrie's defeat... Um, Admittedly, I think that was a pretty stupid move on my part. I should have known that Emolga would have been able to outspeed Petrie, and I should have remembered that they had Quick Attack, but you know how it is. Alright, sorry about that, Petrie. I will let you shine in... Uh, I'll let you shine a little bit more in the next uh, next time I play this game. All right, well, we got quite a bit done in this recording session. I successfully showed off the two new members of my team, Rudy the Sandile and Petrie the Arkin. As well, we got through the entirety of Route 4 and the Desert Resort. Had a little bit of difficulties, but we saw a, quite a lot of interesting new Pokemon. We also managed to beat N in Nimbaza City, and we found out he was the king of Team Plasma. Surprise, surprise. And finally, we beat 
the fourth gym in this game. Now we're halfway there. Four more to beat, and then we can challenge the Elite Four and uh, the champion at the very end. So um, next time we'll be heading on to Driftvale City and challenging the next gym. So uh, I hope you all look forward to that. Uh, farewell and many great goodbyes. This has been CottonMouth255, the Spore Serpent. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and I will see you again soon for more Pokemon Black. See you later, have a good day, and take it easy.